we're going to uh, call to order the City Council meeting of September 15th for the City of Lake Mills. Um, apologize, we're a little late, have some technical difficulties here, but it looks like we're all on. So if I could get a roll call, please. Dan. Here. Here. Mr. Foster. Here. Here. Mr. Fritch. Mine when I plug mine. Oh, weird. My headphones are nice. Well, it's right on the way. Can you hear me now? Gotcha. Okay, Mr. Fritch. Yeah, here. Thank you. Ms. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Woods? There you go. He's here. Thank you. That's it. We got everybody. Oh, excuse me. This is Gerger. Did you guys have the online meeting? Yep. It is set up. I'll try it again. Okay. Okay, it's gone. All right. That was my one that wasn't hooked up. <clears throat> it's gone. Okay. Uh, everybody can rise. Please rise, and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to be public for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, item number four, correction and or approval of the City Council meeting minutes of September 1st, 2020. So move. Second. And seconded. Is there, uh, I guess, no comments? Any discussion from anybody? If not, let's call the roll call vote on that, please. Mr. Foster. Abstain. Mr. Fritch. Aye. Aye. Ms. Schmidt. Aye. Mr. Fields. Aye. Dan. Aye. Motion pass four zero. Okay, thank you, Misty. Uh, item five, correspondence. And we'll start with the lady that's not in the room, Vicki, why don't you go ahead? Um, I got an email from uh, as a constituent about the uh, situation at Cedars. I guess that's being handled. 
uh, and uh, and then I got multiple emails about the crossing for Pinnacle today. Okay. okay. Not the ones that Vicky. Same ones Vicky yes. had. Okay. Mm -hmm. Doug? Same, Same one as Vicky had. All right. Well, Steve, go ahead. I zoomed in for Gucci call in. Um, something I typed in back uh, this week. Um, the email on it and what was going on there. Also, the constituent talk about the cell side meant those processes through zoning and how to go and just an update concerned how fast move sometime and what the plans for the south side development. Um, went cutting at the fire services this afternoon, uh, New Town, very good deal. Um, letter on uh, boat slips and taken up at the next department that'll probably be on the agenda. It was discussed. And then I received the email on the activities. That's all I have. All right. Thank you. Um, and I don't have anything other than the same questions that you all received. So the the stuff at the Cedars, the boat slip rental, and some of the pinnacle stuff that we're going to talk about uh, this evening. So let's move on. Get your stuff back up here. Items. Item number six. We're going to go into question of public comment. Uh, let me make sure here. Uh, public is encouraged to address the council at this time regarding items on the agenda. If your comments pertain to a public hearing, which we don't have any public hearings tonight, you're asked to hold your comments until that hearing. Public comments may also be made at this time on items that are not on the agenda if you have registered with the city clerk before the meeting has been called to order. The state's open meeting law discourages action by the council on items not listed on the agenda. Please keep your comments limited to three minutes as best you can. And state your name and address when starting your comments and fill out the sign-in sheet provided. So the folks that are here, there should be a sign-in sheet. If there isn't one, we'll make sure we have one. And if you're making comments from online, enter your information in the chat function. So we are open for questions and public comment. We'll go with the folks that are in the room first. Is there anybody online that wishes to speak? I keep muting my microphone. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you okay, Mr. Foster. Okay. Is there anybody online that wishes to speak? In public comment? Um, I'm just looking at the messages. It looks like there are some messages, but they are about 20. Well, a minute or so ago. Um, I, I believe there's a Jean that wants to speak. Yeah, I heard her pop up uh, before we started the meeting. Okay. Jean, that was too. Gene, can you unmute your mic? There you go. Hello. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that I could hear. Thank you. Okay. Sue, do you want to make any comments now? I know you're out. No, I got on kind of late, so I think I'm I'm good. Cause all right, yeah. Well, when the item comes up, you'll have a chance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So with that, then we will close the questions and public comment. We'll go to the city manager's report. Uh, 
Uh, you just saw the. You just saw the two check registers that were available for your review. And you want to know that you're going to find out this week that there's a lot of asphalt work going on in the city. Um, the maintenance work and some of the final patching on Mulberry and then the repair on Pinnacle related to the wall route will be done probably this week or next week. Okay. So you'll probably see a lot of that type of work. We're probably shooting for doing the weed and seed on Mulberry. Um, in a week or two. So Brian will probably be walking up in the Mulberry Street here shortly. Um, did, 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 did they, they, they raise, raise or, or lower the, the manholes, manholes on, on Mulberry? Raised on They raised all, all the yeah, manholes yeah. were raised. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. The, Thank the, you. The is that if, if any of them were a half inch or more, so there were a couple that were half inch to one inch to one and a half inches, they raised mm -hmm. those. I think there were five that got raised. Uh, they are working on some of the water valves and uh, them all. They should be pretty much done. And we have some grading and seeding that we want to finalize the weed and seed. Uh, see how we're going to spray it down this fall and see how it goes. And then uh, we may have to come back in in the spring and finalize. And then there was the one spot on Fargo Street where we had some trees that we wanted to take down as part of that project. Um, Rob will probably be taking those down in mid October and finalizing the grading and seeding there. Any other questions? Um, I see a lot of marking up there on the uh, all the manhole covers and along the route on was that B up there by McDonald's? Is it, uh, it's marked the whole way. I see green marks like somebody had marked. Yes, uh, that's, that's uh, Everstream. They're, um, they're putting in fiber optic line. And they, uh, they're putting together plans to run it along County Highway V. They're actually running all the way through the county. So they'll come in on B and then turn on B and then back out B. Uh, and they've asked, they've called in for uh, locates to uh, be able to start their plans. Oh, okay. Okay. I was worried they were going to start some road work there. And I hadn't heard anything about it. So. Okay. Anybody we, else have we, a question? We were looking at doing some work at the intersection. If you remember that sanitary sewer where they hit that horse main up there at the street light. Mm -hmm. And we had all that traffic problem. And yeah, yeah, you're right. That, yep. That had to be repaired. And uh, we were looking at uh, working with them this last week to find out when they wanted us to repair it. Looks like we might just tie it in with our contracts for next summer. So. I guess we'll wait and see what happens there. And do you think it'll cause any issues through the winter and the thawing? Uh, it didn't last winter, and it, it, if it does, we'll just repatch it. It's, uh, I don't even think most people notice that it's there right now. Yeah, not now you don't, no. Okay, anybody else have anything for Steve? Hearing nothing, we will move on to item eight, which is acceptance of the minutes of the Public Works Board of August 11th, 2020, and the Senior Advisory Board of August 6th, 2020. Uh, those will go on record as written. Item nine, council business. We are moving into tab and operator licenses, and I'd like each one of these uh, read as a separate item, and we'll discuss each one separately. So, Misty, if you can read off the first one. Kaylin Nord. All right. Do we have a motion of approval for this tavern operator license for Kaylin Nord? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. Is there any other discussion? Hearing nothing, call the roll call vote, please. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. 
Mr. Fields? Aye. Aye. Diane? Aye. Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. All right. Uh, read the next one, please. Brooke Goodrich McGrath. All right. Do we have a motion on this one? All right. Do we have a motion of denial on this one based on not meeting state statutes? I'll make a motion. Go ahead. Second. Okay. So we have a motion to deny based on not meeting state statutes, state regulations and a second so that was i would like the motion to uh, i'm getting feedback um for direction of the city clerk to inform the applicant in writing about the decision that would be in that motion and then i'll second it so you you made the motion and so you second it. I thought Vicky did. I heard Vicky. Yeah, I only heard you. Okay. I didn't hear Vicky. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. And then we have Doug that seconded. So it's a motion to deny. Deny. To deny. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, is there any other discussion on this? Hearing none, uh, an affirmative answer is to deny the request. So please call the roll. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Aye. Diane? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. All right, thank you. Could you read the last name, please? Elliot Schumann. And I will entertain a motion on this one, whichever way the motioner would like to make it, whether to approve or deny. I move to approve. A second. Okay. Any other? Comments? Hearing none, an affirmative for this one will be to approve. Please call the roll. Mr. Foster, can I just um, get clarification on who made that? Oh, motion? I'm sorry. Doug, Doug made the motion and Thank Diane you. seconded it. Sorry. You. Keep forgetting you're not in the room today. Uh, Mr. Fields? No. Diane? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? No. Motion passed 3 2. All right, thank you. Let's move on to item B. Um, in order for us to discuss this one, we must take this off the table. So I would entertain a motion to remove this from the table. So moved. That was second. Yep, Mr. Fields' uh, motion and Diane seconded. Thank you. Please call the vote. Diane? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Okay, so it's off the table. Could we get the title of that read, please? City Council Motion 20-9-2-1, authorizing the city clerk to notify John's Disposal Service Inc. that the price options have been reviewed and the city manager is authorized to sign a contract extension. Okay, so 
I know we talked about a few options here, so I will. Oh, how do we want to do this? What does this motion? It doesn't ask us to pick one. Yeah. Do we have to make the motion to add the that's, second? Yeah, that's what to amend it to add whatever we're thinking that we would like to add. And we did get that information. Yes. That was amended already? Correct. Okay. Okay. So as we stand right now, the motion is amended to add recycling every week. And unless anybody else wants to make another motion, we will accept we need, a motion of adoption yeah. as I'll amended. Move to adopt as, as amended. amended. Okay. So that was Diane. Do we have a second? Second. Second is Mr. Fritch. All right, so what does this do for us now? This will give us recycling every week and trash every single week um, and the bulk pickup once a month. And this raises... And the bulk pickup requires the owner to call, call or check. I think. Can you email? Uh, yeah, yes. I believe so. Yep. So um, they want your first, first um, experience to be a call, and they create a new account. Okay. okay. So, so uh, uh, and it's once, once a month, month without, without charge. charge. Right. So this adds. Wow, well, my eyes are bad. I guess I could put my glasses on. Maybe I could see better. Um, a dollar twenty-five. Yeah, so it adds a dollar twenty-five per month for everybody to have recycling every single week. How are we gonna? Well, we can talk about how we notice it later. Um, but this does not include the recycling of electronics correct right right you can recycle electronics yeah i guess um you just have to pay it's not incorporated into the fee right exactly but it does look like they offer that two collections per year to do that and that's what that 2021 weekly recycling and electronics would have been Yes. So that would have added another 50 cents a month to do that. So um, at this point, we're looking at just the 2021 weekly recycling and weekly trash. And that is a total of $15.39. Question. I'm having trouble with. Getting, getting up, up what I want to see, see but when is the electronics pick up? Does, does it, it say in there? No, it doesn't say. It says you can add it, um, and you would have two. Oh, oh but, but we, we don't, don't have it. We don't have it, no. Okay, okay. We don't have I it. thought we did. <laughs> yeah, uh, that would be an extra added fee, and they would come twice mm -hmm. a year to pick up TVs mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Right now, you just still have to just pay for it to get rid of it. Okay, so as amended, with weekly recycling, it raises our rate to fifteen thirty nine, which is a dollar twenty five more a month to have 
two extra pickups of recycling. And so basically every week, right? Right. Basically every week you have recycling and trash. Yeah. You don't have, okay, got it. Yep, every. Um, and according to their agreement, if we sign this, this would also stay the same rate for for 20, 2021. The only addition compared to this year will be the dollar point five. Right, so we won't see a raise until somewhere in 2022. This way. Yeah. We did some secret money, so it won't break out exactly this month when we put it on the pill. It'll be, it'll be slightly bigger because we get the grant money about $20,000 a year, so we put that in and we can do our calculation at that point. Okay. Because, you know, we assign a fee in December and then people come and people go and Sure. We don't have to include our expenses that are going to be. So right. it may not exactly be 15 or 30 months to see our recommendation in December. Okay. Yeah, and there's nothing saying we can't look at this later down the road and say we want to take that extra uh, two weeks off if we have to. And they take it off. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I, I have a comment. Yep. I, I do want to let people know that. I had, I had several, several families in my board who really wanted, really wanted the extra recycling. Extra recycling. Um, I think, I it's, think something it's something that you can, that you can live without when you only have one or two people in the house. In the house. Once, once, you start having, once you start having children, children and, and so forth, so forth the, the recycling, recycling just seems, seems to multiply. Mm. Well, as people become more responsible with recycling too, they start yeah yeah oh, definitely so mm -hmm. okay so we have a motion and a second as amended uh, for approval of this contract is there any other comments before i ask for the roll call all right let's please call the roll mr foster aye mr fritch Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Diane? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. All right, thank you. Um, item 9C discussion decision on the electrical utility pole attachment agreement and fee schedule. Could I get that read, please? The title read, please. City Council Motion 20 9 2 2 approval of utility pole attachment agreement and fee schedule. Okay, uh, do we have a motion of adoption for this motion? So moved. Also, oh, we, 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 we don't, don't have a motion. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we do. Oh, we do. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she, she just, just read it. it. Yeah, yeah, she just read it. Yep. Got it. Okay, so you got, you got the motion, Diane. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fields. All right. Um, so I looked at this and we're looking at like $15 per year to connect and then connection fees to set them up. Uh, is there anything else you'd like us to know or does anybody have any actual questions for Steve? Dan actually wrote the agreement and did All the right. research on the project. Um, it's pretty standard. I mean, yeah. this was by our association, and uh, most cities have adopted it. Fees are a little bit different from city to city because some cities have started charging for a couple of years already. We're a little bit behind, and they recommend that you start at this level and work up. So, so 
my question would be if they start coming in, are we, are we going to allow them to put them on our, like our new light poles we have down South Main? And then how do they get power into those? Do they tap off the power of the, is that what it is? No, they, they couldn't attach to the street lights. No, no. They're not designed to handle that kind of weight and um, they don't have the power requirement. They would put in their own poles and bring power from wherever the appropriate power was located. Yeah. On street. Um, yeah, I started digging into some of these and some of the devices themselves are less than a pound. Um, so little boxes or what? Yeah, little, little devices. So in other words, they're not big of truths. Right. They're smaller, they're smaller than a transformer. Yeah. Uh, but they're, they'll have a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, they're smaller than the little cameras that you're seeing up on the walls here. These little cameras are smaller than that. So they potentially could hook to most anything. Um, and, you know, if, if that was the case, it could eliminate the need for them to erect a lot of extra poles and stuff like that. I guess we just have to look at it as the time comes when they, when they get to that uh, point. But it does look like we have a fee schedule set up already for attachment and then a, a yearly schedule. I think it was 15 bucks a year, I think, to have those things on there. And then they paid for their electricity, from my understanding. Anything else for us, Dan, that we should know about this? Uh, I think it's important to let you know that it did go through the Public Works Board. Uh, they did amend the agreement that's in front of you, removing a specific section. Um, the The agreement itself is pretty typical. Um, a lot of different MEUW um, members are using this this same agreement. Uh, it was tailored for Lake Mills. There are issues that we've had in the past um, with regard to pole connections. This isn't this isn't new by any means, um, but we ran into a situation where there was um, certain poles that were owned by the city, certain poles that were owned by um, specific entities, We Energies, for instance, and uh, we ran into kind of a, a break-even proposition where we were using their their facilities they were using our facilities so there was a lack of uh, lease agreements of charging contractors for a number of years during the 2010s um, this is an effort to fix this so uh, we're required to to do this and to have the attachments available to utilities under state statute so this is really an attempt to um, get us with a, a clear framework and understanding on, on how to proceed on this issue and it's combined with the the five the implementation of 5g uh throughout the country um you you pass an ordinance um actually is that on the final reading today yeah final reading today um this is new contractors and, and new entities are, are coming to uh, municipalities throughout the country looking for the opportunity to do this and we're required to by statute so Okay. I have a question for Dan. Yes, ma'am. The motion as we, as I made it, does, does it reflect the change, change that the, the public works for? Yes, the agreement okay. itself does, and the, the agreement that you're adopting has been amended by public works. That is their recommendation. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, there was a, a second form of calculation of the fees that was involved that's a little bit outdated. It was um, Schedule A-1 that was included originally. Uh, Paul Hermanson, the Director of Public Works, and myself discussed it prior to the Public Works Board meeting um, last week, and then we presented it to the Public Works Board with that in mind. We wouldn't mind if you removed Section A-1 specifically and all um, directives within the document regarding section a1 we're not going to engage in that calculus our calculus will simply be the number of attachments the annual rate i think it's simpler okay any other questions thank you we all good okay we have a motion and a second and we're ready for a roll call vote 
Mr. Fritch? He's trying. Ten. Ten. Doug? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Okay. It is working. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't hear if he made his vote. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And that was a yes. Yes, it was. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Ms. Schmidt. Aye. Mr. Fields. Aye. Diane. Aye. Aye. Mr. Foster. Aye. Motion passed five zero. All right, thank you. Item 9V, uh, discussion decision on golf cart crossing design options, Pinnacle Drive. Can I get that uh, title read, please? City Council Motion 20-9-2-3, authorizing the city manager to proceed with alternative blank, providing appropriate improvements for a golf cart crossing located on Pinnacle Drive. Okay, could I get a... Motion of adoption, knowing that we will have to fill in section five and section, yeah, five and two items in num, uh, section six. So moved. And a second? A second. That's Diane. Diane, yep. Mr. Fields with the motion, and Diane with the second. Okay. okay. And I'd also like, like to suspend the rules to allow our speaker to speak when we want, want him to speak. To speak. <laughs> I, don't I don't know if we want him to speak now or in a little bit. But. <laughs> um, okay, let's vote on the um, motion motion first for the um, for the uh, city council motion. Call the roll call vote, please. Wait, wait for, for what? This is. You have oh, I'm sorry. We've got the second. Sorry. You're right. You're right. Never mind. Right. And we just said that knowing well, full well, we have to fill in those alternatives. Um, okay. So you have a motion. Suspend the rules to let our. Yes. I'll second, second that. And Mr. Field seconded it. Okay. Let's call this roll call vote. Ms. Schmidt. Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Aye. Diane? Aye. Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, we got through that. Thank goodness. Um, my assumption is, Dan, you have the lead on this one for us. Um, I heard myself or Steve. How okay, do you want to Wh whoever would like to. Would you like to engage in discussion first? Would you like to hear from the gallery first? I'd like to hear from the staff first. Okay. Bob Dustin is also online. Yep. There, there is headphones in the back. back. And if you put those on, you should be able to hear. Uh, Dustin is online. He did pre uh, prepare option number six. Uh, Mike, if you remember, we met with um, the golf course and had a conversation about the four options. We came up with option number five. Uh, we then met with uh, Lee Ertz and uh, Steve Baker, and there was some, well, there was a lot of conversation, and we came up with option number six which is um, the one that's by itself there. Um, I think that we came out of that meeting thinking that option number six as a test solution would be a good idea. Uh, it was the least expensive, and it gave us the opportunity to make some changes if we needed to in the future. Um, and what we were looking at was uh, being able to Painted on, uh, put in some of the parking, put up some warning signs, and um, maybe put up some uh, rumble strips or speed bumps. 
that could be taken in and out with the golf season. Uh, Dustin, we recommended, we kind of came out of that meeting with that concept. Dustin was working on putting it together. He got it out this morning. And uh, so you should have a copy of that. It's on the agenda. Um, I think I feel comfortable enough doing it that way as long as we know that we may need to make some adjustments in the future. Um, what those are, I'm not sure, but they're some kind of traffic calming device to slow that curve down so that, you know, golf carts coming out and moving through the roadway have some opportunity to get across. Uh, so that's kind of where we're left. Um, I don't know if Dan wants to add anything or Dustin. Uh, Steve, I would just, I would add a couple things. Um, as you said, this is a very scalable option. It builds on option one um, by adding um, a little more pavement marking to ensure that uh, vehicles know where um, uh, they should be oriented, um, keeping them on their side of the street. Uh, it has uh, traditional um, street signage for vehicles to, to know that they are approaching a golf cart crossing. There are, of course, stop signs for the golf carts themselves before they enter the roadway. Um, as Steve mentioned, removable rumble strips could be added in the future if necessary. Also, um, a future stop control could be added on Pinnacle Drive itself if, if it's deemed necessary. Uh, the last element that's not seen there that was discussed with the, um, I'll say most impacted property owners, is um, some small landscaping elements by their driveway on either side of the sidewalk that would prohibit the passage of um, a golf cart from driving down the sidewalk in case someone felt that was the, the route to go in. Um, and that would just be an element that would be developed with, uh, with the property owners. It would probably entail um, some large rock and planting a shrub or two um, to make it so uh, the width of the sidewalk is as wide as something it could be. Someone would truly have to drive through the middle of someone's front yard to, um, to, to try to go that way. So again, um, this is, I'll say, low-hanging fruit. Um, it is the least expensive, easy is to implement option to determine if it's successful, if it's not. The other options that have been outlined involve, I think, a little more infrastructure improvement, moving curb lines, et cetera. Those were not desired by the adjacent property owners, if not necessary okay could you bring up those different options or somebody bring up those different options and just talk us through the different options and my understanding there's been meetings with both the owners of the golf course and some of the property owners it, and it'd be nice to know exactly what what their thoughts were so I know we have some folks here in the audience. And also the question was brought up in email about who's paying for it. Yeah. That has to be I haven't heard that yet. But yeah. I just wonder, do we really have to hear all six if we've got one that we want to do and everybody here would agree? Then do we need to spend the time on the other four or five? Well, it, you know, it really shouldn't take too long to look through them. I just want to understand what one does and what six does. Steve, do you want to run through them? You want me to run through them or Dwayne or Dan? I don't really have an option for sharing another screen. I don't, I don't think. I can, I can hold, hold my hold phone up to it and just show everybody. <laughs> And it's kind of awkward, isn't it? It's not, it's not really That's not really going to work. 
Ah, there you go. Uh, there we go. Learn something, something new every day. So, so the first, the first question regarding payment, um, the expectation is that the golf course is paying for these improvements. Um, they have orally stated that they were going to. Um, this is their infrastructure. The city is not obligated to allow this crossing in this location. Um, this is a compromise that they're, uh, they'd like to make based on the history of where the golf cart crossing has been and it has changed with development through the area uh, through time here. Um, but they, they are expected to pay for these improvements. Um, to answer your subsequent question, the golf course's initial response was, number one is the cheapest solution that you've presented to us. We would prefer that solution. However, they restated in that as we um, discussed some of the pitfalls of number one, that uh, regardless of what the choice was, they were going to be willing to pay for it. Um, number one is by far the uh, kind of the lowest infrastructural burden. There isn't much improvement with regard to curb lines, road work. It is paint and some some uh, some markers. Uh, option six expanded upon um, option number one, and you'll see a price point that's more expensive. However, I believe it will be less expensive than the other infrastructural kind of heavy improvements that you see through um, two through five. Um, I guess those answer your specific questions, Mrs. Fritsch. Uh, where would you like to go from here? I think the council wanted to hear. Uh, one and six is fine, I think, unless anybody else wants to hear the other ones. My my big concern with one or six is still the the, the issue of having traffic going in two different, actually three different directions on that on that stretch of road. Two uh, cars going in one direction and than carts going in the other direction. So basically, there's no separation between where the cart is and the car is on the road, except for a painted line. Uh, that's not exactly correct. On option six, we do include using those um, uh, little over two foot tall flexible posts that you see out there now initially um, to demarcate um, the route for the uh, um, for the carts, the uh, carts would need to be inside of that path, on, on street path, if you will, to get onto the ramp um, that continues along between the houses heading to the, to the west. Okay. Um, so that, uh, shoot. And again, I got to open that up in a different. That way. is something that can be monitored by the city to see if its use is needed in the future. The the, the key is to start training the um, the the golf patrons to follow uh, a system. Um, removing the ability for them to use the sidewalk <laughs> will go a long way. So they couldn't yeah. go up the driveway and access the sidewalk as they have historically um, with the improvements we just talked about um, in the front yard for the for the most impacted property owner. Um, uh, there is hopefully sufficient um, striping and signage to direct both vehicles and golf carts. Um, and the amount of time that is on street is about 125 feet uh, for uh, golf carts. Um, so it's not that they're on on uh, the street for an extended period of time. Um, we are trying to find a solution that is safe but is also acceptable to the adjacent property owners are the one who are the most impacted. Sure. So. Okay. No, that makes sense. I see it. It just doesn't yeah, I see the flexible posts in there yep. now. Um, and those could obviously be removed for the winter, I'm assuming, or is that something that's going to stay there forever? And no, they're, they're, coming, they're coming out. Of the time. Hopefully, after a year or two, they, they're done. They're done. Got they're done. People trained enough that they know where to go. Um, 
we also probably will get other solutions then because uh, we may need to slow traffic down a little bit more. Sure. Something. So it gives us a little bit more flexibility to kind of scale into what uh, the best solution could be in the future. Uh, but at this point, it, it does, it is a very limited option. And obviously, we have no idea what's going to occur over the next year. Uh, we're going to see what they do, what we put in there, and we'll adjust appropriately in that time period. But this one is here at about $3,000. Uh -huh. And it gives, so it gives us a little bit of the golf course, a little bit of time to say, you know, we need to be able to flex this. Sure. Um, uh, so the homeowners are okay with no parking there during the summers. I don't want to speak for them, but okay. <laughs> okay. And so there would be subsequent action. If that's your desire, we'd have to prepare an ordinance in the future for you to actually make that change. This does not contemplate that. No parking. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I understand that. But uh, yeah, uh, obviously when those poles are up there, hopefully people won't drive over them to park. But you never know. <laughs> you never know. You, you can assume a lot of things. Um, let's see here. I'll take them out. What are the questions? Should we let the people speak? Yep, we will. Yep. Any questions? Can't think of anything else before. Okay. All right. All right. So, so we do. We did suspend the rules. So whoever would like to speak, come on, come on up, and say your piece, and we'll go from there. Why don't we let the landowner speak first? That's yeah. That's what I'm doing. Um, I have probably maybe a minute and a half of just some. Verbage notes. Um, Can you go to the mic? I mean, it's not, it's not on. Oh, it's not. Oh, this. Talk loud. Sure. <laughs> um, I'm Jennifer Ebert, my husband Nathan. We own 977 Pinnacle, right where the path would, would most impact. Um, we did reference the September 9th meeting, which I think we all felt was a, a strong outcome. Uh, how, to wrap, how to resolve the issues from the carts um, passing down the sidewalk. We were shown the five options, and then um, with the help of Dustin, came up with what I was referring in my notice to option uh, number one, modify, which I think we're calling option six, which would take away from the enjoyment and as well as potentially forcing one of the most expensive and expansive options on the golf club, which could result in closure. As um, Dustin from the planning team on September 9th noted, you know, why build a bunker when it might not be needed? Um, we would encourage the city council to approve the modified option number one, I think we're calling option six, um, to see how it improves the current issue of situation. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to switch to uh, option six. No, I have it. I, I just, it's a separate PDF, so I have to go in, open the PDF, and then. 
it should be up here any minute now. You can see the blue line streaking across the top as fast as it can go. Yeah, uh, my assumption is that's... Yeah. Uh, my assumption was not. Um, that is just to delineate for traffic moving through there that they need to move over because there's going to be a delineators there and there's going to be traffic. The no parking is going to be basically in front of, of uh, Ebert's. It is painted lines on the ground, but it won't create no parking. It is just a, a demarcation to tell traffic to start moving over. If there's a car park there, it's even better yet because that forces them over anyway. Right. This this way, all we have to do is where the carts are running, and then this is just a demarcation. Now, if we put delineators there, uh, then it would end up being no parking. But I, I think we can do something a little bit less obtrusive in that area. Uh, we can we can put some other kind of barrier there. It'd be ideal if we could start out without it. If it's an issue, we can maybe add some stuff. Yes, we'll look at this, you know, just talk about the bunker mentality and yep. just be I'm sure we'll be criticized appropriately. Yep, just because the, the markers out there, it is, it's just, it's kind of an eyesore too. So if we can get away without them, it'd be ideal. If they're required, we'll have to do something. Yep. And I think like the idea that I haven't seen any issue with cars going through but I've seen a lot of issues with golf carts. Yes. So if we can get the lights. And then I like the attitude of set it up. In other words, we don't have to put the bump strips in unless it's necessary. Um, and then we can react according to what happens. Uh, thank you very much. Yep, thank you. And thank you for coming. Yep, yep thank you. Um, um, yeah, that's what I figured he was raising his hand for. Yeah. Can you hear us now, Dustin? Yes, we can. Uh, so, yeah, we had two homeowners here, uh, the Eberts and their neighbor across the street, and they're both in favor of the, the option six. And one of the things that was a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say concern, it was discussion. Um, is the delineation marks in front of 965 or 955 Pinnacle, if I can. Yeah, those are definitely to orient south, I'll call them southbound travelers on Pinnacle Drive to move over because yeah. they will otherwise get caught in a lane that isn't theirs. Yeah, and the comments were brought up that people might think that's a no parking, which it truly isn't. Um, so we, we thought about the idea of maybe not putting those there unless we truly need to make sure that traffic moves. Again, this is a very scalable option. So yep. you, know, you can always add payment marking later if, if you feel that that's necessary. Yeah. And I think that's, pr I think I hit most of the comments. Did I miss anything folks? No. Um, it's a very delicate balance, Mr. Foster on safety and it is kind of preserving the enjoyment of one's property by the most impacted people. So yeah. um, I, I like the option that you put the, 
the flexible posts in there um, because that fulfills the option that I liked having a little bit of a delineation at least to start with between the, the, the cars and the uh, carts. Um, and then we can adjust from there if we truly need to keep them there forever. We do. If we don't, we can adjust them and take them out. So I think that's, I think that covers most everything that we've talked about that you may have missed. Does anybody else have any other comments or want to make the recommendation for items five and six in the motion if I get back to it here um, so is section five Vicky. who is that this is Vicki um, I think just so that we have it on the record is there a reason that the golf course would not be able to maintain the existing golf cart paths and by just renumbering the holes and so that we don't have to go through any of this. Um, I know that question has been raised, but there hasn't been a discussion about why or why not. So I'm yeah. just putting it out there. Yeah. You could, you could just, just remember the holes. Um, the one hole lands at a spot that would put it between the, the card paths, and you would have distance lines to get around. So if you're looking, at, at this right now, you need to look down, down at the corner, corner right, right here. here. Can we see that? No. How about this? Which one is it, Dave? Yes, yeah, so it, it was very expensive to read the holes. The, the, the options are running the direction of a lot of golf carts driving into uh, yeah. golf balls and, and extremely hazardous conditions. So the, the option would be to read the holes and you'd have to change the rest of the holes. So it, it was much more expensive than these options. options. It's not, not impossible. Yet. Yeah, but it was it was much more expensive than the high cost of fifteen grand for the most expensive option we had for marking or making changes to the roadway. Um, yeah, it, it could almost double that cost for them to try to renumber holes at a minimum. Yeah, at a minimum. You're right. So that's that's where we sit with that, Vicky. Does that answer the question? You think? Yeah, I, it, you, you know, it's just unfortunate because I know when this development was originally platted, it was all determined where these golf cart paths were supposed to be, and it was made as part of the plat. And why we are in this situation now that we're in, uh, it still boggles my mind as to why did this even happen? It should have remain the way it was originally platted but i guess there's nothing we can do about it yeah unfortunately we're we're in this position now hindsight is always 2020 um but we are where we are I okay. uh, looking at the motion would six go in all three spots it would Okay. So yep, it would. Do you need a motion? Well, it's it's Mr. Field's motion currently. So if yep. he was looking to change his motion, he could do that so long as the second approved of his change. Yep. That is the active motion. So I move to insert option six into the motion. Is I the second? Yes. Okay. I will approve the second. Okay. So we have the motion of adoption with option six. 
Is there any other conversation? If not, I'm going to ask Misty to call a roll. Okay, go ahead and call a roll. Mr. Fields? Aye. Aye. Diane? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. All right, folks, thank you so much. I knew we could get to a starting point here, so I appreciate you uh, bearing with us and uh, suffering through this process. Unfortunately, it takes a little bit longer sometimes when government's involved, but uh, I do appreciate you bearing with us, so thank you. And uh, we'll keep this thing going forward and see what changes need to be made, if any need to be made in the future. So thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. We're real sorry that this even happened. Yeah. Which I think what is Vicky was saying. Yeah. Shouldn't have even happened. Right. I guess my only question would be about what Dustin was talking about, about the landscaping ideas and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Foster? Separate meeting. Yeah. I, I would suggest that we have them meet with Brian Carranza and and um, probably Dwayne or someone from the city to work through what would be some uh, simple yet effective landscaping options for that little area. Something that's okay. acceptable to the property owners. And I think you're also looking at who's paying for it. But Okay. All right. Thanks, Dustin. Thank you. Uh, that moves us on to resolution 20 35, the county library tax exemption. Could you read that title, please? Resolution 20 35, resolution request an exemption from county library tax. All right. Do we have a motion of adoption for this? So moved. Moved by. Doug Fritch, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Fields. Uh, this is our exemption for that we do every single year so we don't pay the county tax. Um, so there's nothing different on this unless anybody has any discussion on this one. Hearing nothing, call the roll call vote, please. Well, we can make a motion, yeah. I'll make a motion. No, oh. they made the oh, motion. We yeah, we yeah, did. Sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, Missy, go ahead. Diane? Hi. Mr. Foster? Hi. Hi. It's time to go home. Yeah. Mr. Rich? Hi. Ms. Schmidt? Hi. Mr. Fields? Hi. Motion passed 5 0. <laughs> So bad. <laughs> hey, uh, we're all we're all do those things. I had mine already today. Uh, uh, item nine F ordinance twelve fifteen. Can I get that title right, please? Ordinance twelve fifteen, amending chapter two eleven, utilities municipal, adding article three wireless communications facilities in the right of way. And this is the third reading. Yes. So I would entertain a motion of adoption for this. So moved. Mr. Fritch moved for this adoption. Is there a second? Second. second. Mr. Field second. Is there any discussion on this one? And we never had anybody speak against mm -hmm. this at all. So no. Okay, let's call the roll call vote, please. Mr. Foster? Aye. Mr. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Diane? Aye. Motion passed 5 0. Thank you. That puts us at recommendation for future agendas. Does anybody have anything that we know of right now? I just have a question. Uh, I'm a council member. Oh, Dan's not here. I guess he will. I'll talk to him tomorrow. Later. Steve, do you have anything you want to let us know about right away, except for our next meeting on 
the budget. Yep, budget work session and yep, six thirty. Six thirty. All right. Uh, item eleven. We will convene in a closed session pursuant to Wisconsin State Statute nineteen point eight five one e deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. And 19.851G, conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved. Do we have a motion to move into closed session? So moved. And a second. 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 Oh, Vicky, Vicky got it. Call roll call vote, please. I'm sorry. I was it Steve or Doug? Yes, yes, it was Steve. Thank you. Sorry about that. It's okay. I just wanted to clarify. Um, yeah. Mr. Fritch. Aye. Ms. Schmidt. Aye. Mr. Fields. Aye. Diane. Aye. Mr. Foster. Aye. Motion passed five zero. All right, we are now going into closed session after a couple minute recess here. And we will be back in here.